Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to Thursday Lessons. Today is going to be legal English. The topic of today is going to be the presidential Mozambican decree relating to COVID-19, more specifically the state of emergency. So I'm not so much going to um, position myself in the issues um, that I'm going to be dealing with. Uh, it is mostly to teach you the terminology. Uh, what is terminology? Is a body of terms related to a specific subject or a specific area. For example, uh, law has its own terminology, medicine has its own terminology, and so on. So we're talking about uh, specialized uh, terms, which is different than the standard language, okay? Uh, normal people or normal relationships usually use standard normal language. Terms are borrowed um, across fields. Uh, that is to say that law borrows uh, terms from medicine and vice versa. For example, think about IT. I think about windows, for example. You know that these are windows, isn't it? Uh, we have windows of, uh, in IT, right? Um, think about trial. Uh, trial, the word trial means different things in medicine and in law. Um, in uh, medicine, trial means experiment. So it means that scientists and doctors are going to use a group of people, for example, to experiment, to try new medicine in order to see um, its efficacy, right? And then after they try the medicine on a certain or restricted group of people, they can then establish its functionality, okay? Whereas in law, um, trial means legal process in court. So it has to do with um, judges and jury to assess information in order to judge uh, whether a, a person is guilty or not. When I say person, I can also mean uh, an, an entity, okay? So, uh, Mozambique counts 76 confirmed COVID-19 cases since the first case came to light uh, in March this year. Now, I've used the term coming to light since the first case came to light, what is that? It means to appear, to have been discovered, to come up, um, to be revealed. So you can say something came to light when that thing has been discovered, has been revealed. But yesterday, the president extended the period of state of emergency for 30 more days. He extended the period. In Portuguese, that would be prorrogar. Prorogue means something else that does not mean to extend. To prorogue in English means to suspend. For example, if the parliament uh, stops its function earlier than it should be, uh, we can say, well, it has suspended. It's, imagine that the parliament building uh, caught fire, so they had to stop the activities for that day, or they had to stop the activities for today, and then they would resume tomorrow. So then you can say, the parliament has been prorogued, okay? This has nothing to do with prorogar in Portuguese. Now you would wonder, okay, so Mozambique has 76 confirmed cases. Why is it that the country or the president decided to extend the state of emergency period? It is for the simple fact that um, they do not want to overwhelm the national health system. You see, they do not want to overwhelm. What does that word mean? Sobrecargar, overwhelming. Okay? Uh, now, 
uh, this word, esta palavra, não tem apenas conotação negativa. This word can mean positive and negative. You can be overwhelmed with joy or by joy and you can also be overwhelmed by sadness, by sorrow, you see? So overwhelmed is actually um, too much, you know, that you cannot handle. It's just too much for you, for a situation, for an institution, for a country, you see? So um, the president did not want to overwhelm the national health system. For this purpose, the president acted through a decree. Let me tell you about um, the restrictions that are established in that decree. A few restrictions. Okay, so we have a suspension of classes across all levels of education, starting from kindergarten up to university level, private schools, private institutions and public schools, they were all cancelled. People are attending classes through uh, radio, TV and internet. Can you imagine? Yes, that's happening in Mozambique. Isn't that wonderful? So they're actually taking the same measures that we in the West are doing. Um, I myself, as you all know already, I am attending a master's in translation and uh, I am I am homeschooled at the moment so it's quite safe that way isn't it um, so another measure is that all kinds of gatherings are prohibited we're talking about um, you know including miraculous churches, you know, those churches constantly full of people who are very uh, competitive with each other. Um, it's, it's really sad that the pastors, the ones that usually are able to cure so many diseases, including HIV, they're not able to cure um, COVID-19, unfortunately. So they have to be suspended because they're not being useful enough. Hmm? Um, circulation within the country of Mozambique is also limited. Well, that's a good uh, that's a good move, which means that's a good step, that's a good action. Indeed, this is a good move because I am thinking about those uh, buses which usually are so overcrowded. You know, it, so it is commonplace that the buses, the long distance buses are packed, packed, full, packed. Now, the decree also establishes the possibility of geolocalization, which is a very, very controversial topic. Controversial. It is very uh, discussed. People have many opinions about it. It is controversial, okay? So why is it controversial? Because many people believe that uh, it restricts too much of the freedom of someone. If you have to track, to try to control the steps or the moves of the infected people, that is too much of an invasion of privacy. The European Union rejected such proposal. It does not want geolocalization but South Korea for example Italy have implemented geolocalization um, and it worked for, for, for at least for South Korea drastic times call for drastic measures that's an idiom in English what does it mean it means that when you were faced with the, with the unexpected situation you have to go to the extreme to try to resolve that situation. And at the moment, we are indeed in a very extreme situation. We are uh, before a force majeure, which is Forza Maior. 
in Portuguese. An unexpected situation that um, requires uh, adjustment of uh, all uh, the implications that would usually apply. Okay? In terms of the impact of COVID-19 in Mozambique, it is of a great devastation uh, because the majority of the people of Mozambique uh, tend to be self-employed. They uh, tend to work um, on uh, informal sectors without any sort of insurance. No health insurance, no social security, so they are on their own. So in that sense, you can imagine how the impact of this situation is being. This is going to be a great crisis. So, um, but the good thing is that the government of Mozambique and the private sector, uh, you know, the, the, the rich or the well-off entrepreneurs, are actually supporting a lot of families, a lot of uh, uh, medium-sized or small-sized entrepreneurs are being supported by the government. Uh, for example, $500 million was allocated, was lent to uh, private banks so that they can lend to their clients. Very good measure, isn't it? Um, well, uh, the, the private sector is also uh, donating a lot of um, items such as soaps, uh, it is donating um, sanitizers, water and so on. And there are also organizations uh, that have been created precisely to tackle this problem. For example, there is something very uh, inspiring such as um, there's an organization of entrepreneurs called SOS COVID-19 or something like that that has been um, created just to help the government or help the people of Mozambique uh, tackling uh, this issue. And they have helped build uh, tunnels, public tunnels that work as uh, sanitizers. I'm not really sure how it works because you know, people are so busy these days that they were not able to explain me exactly how it works. But from what I see on TV uh, is that people get in there, they wash their hands or whatever, and I can see some steam uh, coming out of it. I don't know how it works. It's something that I would have to research a bit more. And uh, if you want to know about it, just comment down below and remind me uh, next time and I will explain exactly how it works, okay? Let's make this a very, very interactive um, business. <laughs> Build some sentences and apply the terms that we've learned today in those sentences. For further lessons, you can always contact me because I also give private lessons one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So thank you very much for listening and please do comment and like and subscribe because this is going to get even more exciting as I get more comfortable with this. It's quite easy for me to be outside. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> it's chilly now. It's 13 degrees again. Okay, so I have to stay inside. I just hope it doesn't rain next Sunday so I can be outside and have um, you know the, the usual sun um, thank you very much and uh, enjoy your weekend see you next Thursday bye bye